Good afternoon, Smith. Good afternoon, sir. आज मैंने मैसेज किया था मिल गया था ना उसमें आज हाँ सर मिल गया था अभी क्या सर वारा सर का थोड़ा लेक्चर चालूगे वो बाद में हम सब ज्वाइन होंगे ओके 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 सर थैंक यू
Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, today, actually, I preponed my lecture from four to three. Madam will be taking from four onwards today. And uh, one more thing uh, on Wednesday, instead of uh, in the afternoon at three again, I'll be taking from uh, 10 a.m. when you have your lab. So I'll not be taking in the afternoon, but instead I'll be taking on in the morning itself on Wednesdays. Is it okay? Yes, sir. I already passed on that message. Good, good. Thank you. Thank you, Richa. So, because morning may we are fresh and uh, so it is better rather than at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Little bit, I mean, people are down and so it is better that I should take in the morning and as such, your labs are over and if at all, if it happens someday, some day, some week, then it is fine. We'll inform you, but henceforth, I'll be engaging uh, from 10 onwards. Today they are very less in number, only 35. I am seeing only 35. Uh, this figure reaches to 45 sometimes. Okay. Okay, I'll just I'll just start the presentation. Yes. So we had uh, finished till uh, I suppose uh, ion association complexes we, we did, uh, Richa? Yes, sir, it was done. It was done, good. So uh, up till now we have studied liquid liquid extraction and under which initially we understood how we can extract essentially organic compounds and then uh, which are essentially covalent in nature. And we talked about compounds when they are ionic and when they are uncharged. So that was it regarding uh, extracting molecules. Now we are interested in extracting uh, metal ions, inorganic ions, which are well-defined, fully charged metal ions. And under metal ions, the, mo the most important aspect is to extract them from aqueous to organic. Uh, we need to somehow suppress the charges, neutralize the charges. And in doing so, uh, we have two different approaches. One is ion association complexes, which we did last time, in which uh, we what we do is we we try to make uh, the cation more organic-like, more covalent kind of a thing, a bulky thing, such that it it prefers to stay to stay in uh, the organic phase. But <clears throat> there are relatively very few examples. We did three four examples last time uh, which were very specific examples specific for iron and specific for urinal ions for manganate and there are many others as well but relatively less when you look at uh, metal chelates or complexes when you look at those kinds of you know, molecules uh, ion association complexes are generally not in use first thing is that they are not I mean, uh, they are very specific for a particular ion under very specific conditions. And secondly, mm, the stability is also is always an issue uh, when when two ions associate. And then, uh, of course, uh, through some forces, through some interactions, ion pair formation, etc. But 
stability is a major you know issue in uh, uh, extracting cations via ion associations so the other thing which is most widely used widely used here is uh, metal chelates or metal complexes so the entire body of work if you look at the literature in extracting cations from organic medium or uh, aqueous medium to organic medium um, majority of the in majority of the cases you will find some ligands which are being used um, which uh, bind with the cation and essentially masking the charges on it making it bulky at the same time more importantly the stability the stability is more and therefore uh, of course it can be more relied upon and uh, they are not very specific similar to like like ion association uh, so uh, in in and in metal chelates ligands or complexing reagents complexing agents uh, are being used and if you look at the literature you will find you no know, host of such compounds such chemicals available now but the difference here when we compare with ion association and metal chelates is these compounds are not very specific these compounds are not specific what i mean by not specific is ke ye sab ek compound 4 5 6 7 8 8 cations ke sath interact karta hai bind karta hai chelates banata hai complex banata hai so they are not very specific there are very few compounds which are very specific so this is one you can say one limitation of metal chelates um, this slide shows three such reagents or ligands or complex or complexing agents one is um, eight hydroxyquinoline which is a very well known reagent in literature which is not specific cupferon is relatively specific relatively specific that it prefers to bind with copper as well as iron and then diethazon again it is uh, it is not a specific reagent because it binds with practically all transition metal ions to different extent so this is the status of uh, metal chelate formation uh, for extracting metals from aqueous to organic medium but what is the essential uh, criteria for a ligand to act as a you know extract for extracting metal ions the first thing is they should be weak acids this is one such criteria and one very important criteria you may ask why not strong acids be used see if if it is a strong acid naturally it will be dissociated to a greater extent larger extent if they are dissociated as such it is very difficult for them to bind with something else if it is simply doesn't want to be with h plus it can very well release h plus and hence become strong so the chances of this interacting with cations other cations metal ions becomes even less so the best ligands are those which are weak acids so that under certain conditions they can be made to lose their proton and then they can bind with the metal ion that means we create a condition where there is a competition between the proton which is present with the weak acids and the metal ion so the conditions are such that it starts to prefer metal ions that means uh, it starts to lose protons and therefore it tries to bind with metal ions Uh, these are the three well known uh, structures uh, ligands of ligands which are being used uh, ox oxine is um, i mean uh, is can bind with practically everything diethazon as well so there are many others uh, which are very commonly used 
110 phenanthrolene, which is relatively specific for iron 2. Uh, so in this way there you will find you know, many, many such ligands in literature. But this is just a representative, you know, this uh, information about what are ligands. And the ones which are in blue, this is blue, they are uh, the coordination, coordinating sites with the metal ions, coordinating sites with the metal ions. And uh, OK, so this was all about ligands. Uh, they are they can bind with um, cations and they give relatively you know, stable structures. So they are one of the candidates for extracting uh, metal ions. Now, now we will look at uh, <clears throat> how things are extracted using a complexing agent or a ligand, just like what we just saw. Now, this is a diagram which which tells us that <clears throat> how metal ions are extracted from an aqueous media to an organic media. What you can see in this cutout is the upper layer is an aqueous phase, the lower layer is an organic phase. Uh, I mean, anything can happen. The organic layer can be up and aqueous layer can be down depending upon the density of the organic solvent here you have chloroform. So it is denser than water. So therefore it is at the bottom. And so that means basically there are two phases, aqueous and organic. What you have is, the system is, what you have is the cation. This is the cation. This is the cation which you have uh, in the aqueous phase. And then you have a ligand which is represented as HL, which is represented as HL which is there in the organic phase. <clears throat> this is what we have. And we are supposed to bring this, this, this cation into the organic phase. That is what our aim is. But since they are into two different solvent systems, two immiscible solvent systems, there will be some equilibria which must be happening uh, for it to bring it to the organic phase. So let, let us now consider what are the different equilibria which would be occurring in such a system of two immiscible phases. First thing, the ligand which was when you shake, this is a solid extraction system and you shake. Well, once you sh shake, what will happen? This HL, the ligand, will distribute between the two phases, which is obvious. This is what we understood when we were studying about neutral substances. So it will have a partition coefficient for the ligand. So it will have a partition coefficient for the ligand. Let that be KL ligand. So it will have an equilibrium constant. That equilibrium constant will be KL and that is a partition coefficient or distribution coefficient. Now it has entered into the aqueous phase. It has entered into the aqueous phase. Now, since this is a weak acid now, this is a weak acid, it will, and it is an aqueous system, it is an aqueous system. So, if there are conditions in this aqueous phase such that this starts to dissociate, so this is an acid, weak acid, so it will have an equilibrium constant, and that equilibrium constant would be the ionization constant, the acid dissociation constant, which we call as Ka. So Ka will be the equilibrium constant for this equilibria. HL dissociates to L negative plus H plus. And this is what we want. This is what we want. So looking at this, this uh, you know, reaction, what we can predict here is that if in the aqueous medium, there are, if there is a slight you know, alkaline conditions, this process this process would be favored because under basic conditions, this will try to you know, remove or eliminate this H plus from the ligand and it will go into the medium, into the aqueous phase. Of course, it is a charged species, so it, is, it has no problem that way. So what we want to generate is, we want to generate a negatively charged species of that ligand. And that would be possible when there's a alkaline medium. Once this is generated, 
immediately it will look for something which is positive and that is present which is a metal ion so it tries to neutralize its charge as, as well as the, the charge of the metal ion will be neutralized when they bind together to give a species called mln n means the charge so this is a basically a complex formation reaction complex formation reaction so again this is a, this is an equilibria but this is happening in the aqueous phase this is happening in the aqueous phase as you can see this is a charged species this is also a charged species but this is an uncharged species and the equilibrium constant for this is known as the formation constant that is beta formation of metal ligand complex and that is expressed as beta once it is a neutral species once it is a neutral species what will happen it will not prefer to remain in the aqueous phase it will prefer to come to the organic phase where it is more suited because it is not it is no it is no more charged species it is an uncharged species so this equilibrium would be favored now when this mln distributes between two phases between these two phases there will be an equilibrium constant and that equilibrium constant would be a partition coefficient or distribution coefficient because this is neutral this is neutral so it will have one more equilibrium constant so basically for a simplest case of extracting one metal ion using a complexing agent there will be four different equilibria which are happening across these two immiscible phases in a system and that is what solvent extraction is now the 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 most important aspect is under what conditions under what conditions uh, uh, we can have the maximum extraction or we can have the higher distribution ratio because there are different species now once there are different species we talk about what we talk we talk about distribution ratio if there is a single species in both the phases we talk about partition coefficient a distribution coefficient but when there are multiple species of that same substance we talk about distribution ratio so this is our system and this has four equilibria and that is what is shown in the next slide now <clears throat> ligand distributes between the two phases aqueous and the organic the first thing which happens to the ligand when it when it is shaken across the two phases so you have a partition coefficient for the ligand which is represented as kl so as per convention you write the organic phase in the numerator and aqueous phase in the denominator so it distributes it distributes from aqueous to organ from organic actually it go it is in organic initially so from organic to aqueous but we we generally write this way this is a convention now once it goes into the aqueous phase once it goes into the aqueous phase what will happen this is a weak acid it dissociates if it dissociates it will have a acid dissociation constant or ionization constant ka so k would be by simple law of mass action this into this divided by hl aqueous this is how we write this is the expression of law of mass action now once this is formed it is dissociated this is formed it will bind with the ligand it will bind with the metal ion this ligand will bind with the metal ion to form a complex so it will give rise to another equilibria that is beta and this beta is again mln aqueous divided by mn plus aqueous and l negative aqueous so we have three such equilibria and the fourth one once this is formed and this is neutral it will try to go to the organic phase it will try to go to the organic phase and thereby lead to one more one more equilibrium constant and that is known as km which is again a partition coefficient which is a partition coefficient and again the expression for this would be mln organic and mln aqueous 
So we have these four equilibria in the simplest case of extracting one one cations. This is uh, in real samples. Generally, we don't encounter only one. There are many others as well. But this is for understanding what actually must be happening in across two phases when metal ions are extracted using a ligand or a complexing agent. These are the four equilibria possible four equilibria which may occur. Now, as I said, what we want, what we want is we want that. the metal ion should be extracted to the you know with higher efficiency maximum quantitative extraction now <clears throat> the distribution ratio now the distribution ratio will depend upon what or distribution ratio will be equal to what and we know that is total because we want to extract metal ion and therefore it is with respect to metal ion total metal ion concentration in organic divided by total metal ion concentration in the aqueous phase that is how we define distribution ratio and total metal ion in the organic phase would be mln organic that is what we would find in an organic phase at the end of the extraction and the same time there would be some metal ion which is unextracted because of certain conditions which will remain in the aqueous phase so essentially distribution ratio would be equal to the concentration of metal ligand in the organic divided by the concentration of the metal ion in the aqueous phase do you get this much i mean have you understood Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, okay. Sir. Okay. Good. Good. Very good. Very good. Uh, so, this is this is what we started from. Uh, we started from this. We we found out that there are these are the possible you know uh, uh, equations or equilibria which are occurring in the two phases. This is what we want. We want maximum metal ion to be extracted in the organic phase. Now, two. to have a formula or an expression where we can directly relate we can incorporate all what is happening in the two phases into a formula and then possibly arrive at uh, some relation about the conditions under which conditions under which d would be the maximum there will be greater efficiency of extraction of metal ions that is what we want by taking into consideration the all the four equilibria to agar hum ye charo equilibria ko fir se dekhte hain to humko usme kya kya dikhta hai see you just see the last one ye kya keh raha hai ki partition coefficient for the metal ligand complex would be this fine if you look at this uh, this formula what we find is d is equal to mln organic so can we substitute the value of mln organic from this expression which will be equal to km into mln aqueous we need to be very particular about the phase in which they are so it will be klm klm into mln aqueous this would be in the numerator okay if you look at the other equation here we get something for mln aqueous mln aqueous is equal to beta into mn plus aqueous and l negative aqueous so if we substitute in place of mln aqueous this we can substitute from here once we have substituted that what we will find now ln concentration aqueous if you look at the other equation the second equation what we find is yes we do find this term so if you substitute ln aqueous from this equation into the previous equation after adding this what will what will be it it will be ka into hl aqueous divided by h plus that will be our l negative aqueous so if you substitute that in place of this in the previous equation in this equation fine what else do we find when we substitute this we find this also hl aqueous okay if you look at the first equation 
we find HL equus. Yes. So can we substitute uh, HL equus is equal to HL organic divided by KL in place of HL equus? Yes. So every time you will see that you come across one term which is present in the previous equation. So you just keep on putting the values of these concentrations. Uh, here organic, ML organic, ML and equus, L negative and HL equus into this equation one after another, one after another into this in the, into this uh, expression or formula. What you arrive at is this. This is what you arrive at. By substituting all the four equations. In the equation for distribution ratio. What we get finally is this. We get these are all constants KM, beta, KA, KL. These are the four constants. Equilibrium constants plus what else we find? We find HL organic divided by H plus aqueous. This is neutral. Obviously, it will be in the organic phase. This is charged. Obviously, it will be in the aqueous phase. So what we can surmise from this entire derivation is distribution of metal chelate complexes between two immiscible phases is directly proportional to the concentration of the ligand taken in the organic phase. The concentration of the ligand taken in the organic phase. And the H plus ions or the pH. Agar ye zada hai, HL organic zada hai, to D zada milega. Or H plus aqueous kam hai, to bhi zada milega. Jab H plus kam hai, matlab pH zada hona chiye. When H is less, pH would be more. Value of pH would be more. So at alkaline in alkaline pH, if we have sufficient amount of the ligand taken in the organic phase, D could be maximized. And therefore, distribution ratio depends upon the ligand concentration and the pH. So finally, what we conclude out of uh, this uh, extraction thing for extracting a metal ion from an aqueous phase to an organic phase. What we derive is that to maximize extraction. Now this is these, these are the general you know, outcomes. Uh, to maximize D, we need to have a sufficient amount of uh, ligand concentration in the organic phase initially. And of course, we need to have a lower pH because uh, I mean uh, a higher pH and lower H plus just because so that the ligand when it enters the aqueous phase, it should readily dissociate. And when it dissociates appropriately, then it would bind with the cation. And therefore, it depends upon lig ligand concentration and pH. So that is what we we finally conclude from uh, this thing of extracting metal ions with the help of chelates. Yes, 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 OK, now this is a this is a, a simple example. Which signifies what we have just understood. This is a very classical example. Of lead. Being extracted by dithiazone ligand. To form a. Bigger complex a more organic complex. And. As you can see, it is written 
then pb forms a stable pink stable this is important forms a stable pink or red colored complex 1 is to 2 with dithiazone which is diphenyl thiazone in mild alkaline conditions in the solvents such as carbon tetrachloride chloroform dichloromethane or other non polar solvents so now here you can observe that the the solvents are not restricted which was there in ion association so you have a wide choice of solvents but essentially they should be non polar they should have low dielectric constant and if that is the case it can form a very stable complex if you can see this reaction the more interesting part here is you see this 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 reagent when you dissolve it in uh, chloroform or carbon tetrachloride this is green in color diethazine is green in color lead solution obviously it is colorless now when it binds when it binds it gives rise to red color and the the complex is 1 is to 2 that means one lead binds with two molecules of diethazone to give a very symmetrical highly stable five membered rings two five membered rings and this is a very stable structure and as you can see the log beta the the, the beta value that is 10 to the power 16 is very very high one can understand the stability and uh, see anything about 5 6 7 8 8 would be considered high and this is 10 to the power 16 so you can understand the stability of uh, such complexes such metal complexes which is not the case in with uh, ion association maybe 10 to the power 2 10 to the power 3 10 to the power 1 i mean that would be the range in which you will find some of the cases in association complexes but in chelates this is how they form and as you can see this is a very perfectly balanced uh, charge balance equation two charges here 2 plus and 2 h plus are eliminated this h sh h is eliminated so you have two molecules of this so 2h plus are removed and in place of that there is a very good perfect balance between the charges and formation of a relatively you know uh, a very strong complex very strong stable complex and this color so you when you do this extraction now uh, you start with green color in the organic phase and ultimately when you end up you get red color so it can be seen visually that yes extraction has happened it is not everything is colorless it is colored and it was previously green in color and then it turns to red so you have you have so many things to observe here uh, uh, when you are, and and see for yourself that yes you can get uh, you can form a complex in solution as well and it has a very high molar absorptivity this is again a very high molar absorptivity 10 to the power 6 is the maximum molar absorptivity in this range this this range is a very high range of molar absorptivity that means it is a very sensitive reagent for lead though it is not selective but it is sensitive for lead so this is one such example i have shown again a representative example to show uh, how a chelate is formed and what other things are associated with it now this this is a figure i mean i mean this is a figure yes which 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 tries to find out to what extent to what extent uh, your reagent is selective with metal ion because sensitive fine agreed is it selective because when you work with again work with real samples you will have lot many ions so is it possible that it is it is made selective towards one so now if you look at this figure what you find is this is a very interesting figure where on the vert, on the horizontal axis you have ph on the vertical axis you have percentage extraction and what you find here is if you want to extract cadmium for example with dithiazone it is in the range of 10 to 11 to around 12 ph and if you look at the others like copper or tin or even lead or um, uh, Or, or zinc here, they are extracted 
to uh, I mean quantitatively up to 88.5 pH here. So now what this figure tells us that if you have a mixture of cadmium, lead, zinc, tin, copper, silver, bismuth, mercury, so on and so forth. If you can maintain a pH between 10 to 11 or 12, you can extract cadmium and to a certain extent thallium and to a certain extent thallium. But it can, it will be separated from zinc, lead, tin and others. So this is, uh, this one can always, uh, this, this chart, this figure can be prepared for any kind of, uh, you know, any kind of, uh, uh, you know, a reagent uh, for it to be shown as selective towards uh, a particular kind of a particular metal ion uh, through this, through this, you know, output. So this is just again uh, to give you an idea how um, diethyogen, though it is non-selective because it's bind with everything, but under maintaining under certain conditions, you can make it more selective, pH selective. Yeh chiz saman mein aai. You you all seem to be yes, tired sir. today. Are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, so. Okay. Only 35? Oh my God. Very less. But I guess due to some family issues, the students are not able to join the lecture these days. Okay. Family issues? I mean... Uh, yeah, so like the family members, you know, suffering oh. from Corona or some infection. Achha, 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 achha. Yeah. So. yeah, yeah. I understand. I mean, this is a very... Difficult period for everyone, and but the, my only concern and worry is that by the time they join, half of the things will be done, so they will be missing so many things, and that is that sometimes bothers me. Anyway, I understand, I have no such thing, but fine, fair enough. Okay, now with this last slide, we conclude regarding uh, whatever we understood or whatever we, I thought of telling you regarding solvent extraction. Um, these are certain limitations. Some of the limitations may not be valid as of now because there are so many technological changes in this, this process. Because see, it finds application everywhere in, in chemical analysis, in biological analysis, in environmental samples, etc. Everywhere you will find. But of course, the apparatus would be different, but the same thing applies. Now, I have listed you know, six such limitations of solvent extraction. Uh, the first is uh, only water immiscible solvents are used. Okay, that is well understood, uh, but still we have uh, the others which are not water miscible. There are four or five solvents like methanol, ethanol, uh, acetonitrile, and dioxane, and acetone, which are water miscible. Rest of them are water immiscible. So we have a still large number of solvents available with us. But yes, as far as those solvents are concerned, be used. So this, this could be one of the limitations, not a very major limitation, but yes, one of the limitations. The second is relatively large volumes of solvent are required. Now, this is a, you know, when you work with large volumes of solvent in a conventional, uh, uh, this thing, uh, separatory funnels, of course, you require 20, 30, 40 ml of organic solvents. But now in this age of mini miniaturization, you know, as I said, you can do the same thing in 2, two 3 ml vial. So, okay, 10 times reduction in solvents is possible now. But yes, when you are working with large concentrations of uh, analyte in a given sample, you will definitely need more solvent to to, to extract. Uh, so, yes, relatively large volumes of solvent are required. Then solvent disposal. Now, once you use large volume, the, the next problem that is standing is in front of you is solvent waste generated and that needs to be disposed of. And that dispose of again requires energy. So it is a cumbersome affair and it is not environment friendly. Also, these solvents are not very good. 
So solvent disposal will always remain a problem and therefore research is currently underway since last decade or so to have alternate solvents in solvent extraction. For example, ionic liquids are being, are being considered uh, to replace conventional organic solvents at some places, though they have their own limitations as of now, but maybe over a period of time, those limitations will be overcome and then they can substitute at most of the places these toxic organic solvents. Yes, solvent disposal is a problem and uh, in liquid liquid extraction. The fourth one and most important, I would say that emulsion formation, yes. Whatever you reduce the volume, you increase the volume, whatever may be the case, if you cannot eliminate elim elim emulsion formation. I mean, you can control to a certain extent, but you cannot eliminate. So this is one of the major limitation, which I would say uh, for solvent extraction, emulsion formation, because um, when there are two distinct phases, different phases, and uh, to <clears throat> when they and, and at, the, at the same time you shake, so you mix thoroughly. So there will be some emulsion between the you know, two layers. So, but if if one uses uh, equal volumes, one can you know, you know prevent large emulsion form em emulsion formation. But you cannot avoid it. There are emul demulsifying agents available, but their use again brings other problems. So emulsion would be formation would be a major problem, which I consider for liquid liquid extraction apart from others. But there are some remedies for others often manually operated. Yes, it was manually operated. It is still being manually operated, but now it is also automated. So uh, one does not need to uh, do this experiment, this process manually. But yes, still it is being, it is in practice. So this could be a limitation and sometimes it requires back extraction. Now for back extraction, what I would say is not every time you require back extraction, but yes, in some cases, like for example, if I just consider the previous case, previous example here, what I said was if you're extracting cadmium, then some amount of thallium would be extracted, but others would not be extracted. Okay. So if you have a mixture of this, all, all seven, eight, nine uh, ions, then you can first extract thallium and cadmium together because when you extract cadmium, thallium will also be there because they are, you know, overlapping in some region. So you have extracted both. Now you want, once you have separated these two from the bulk, now you want that cadmium or zinc should be, or, th or thallium should be, you know, separated. So you will back extract it in an aqueous phase by creating a condition whereby you decompose that complex. If one can decompose cadmium complex, the cadmium will come out, come into the aqueous phase. Or if, if one can decompose thallium complex, then thallium will come out in the aqueous phase. Resulting that you are, you are separating the, you are separating thallium and cadmium. So this is an example which you can say, which you can understand for, you know, uh, when we require back extraction. In such cases, we do require back extraction. So these are the possible limitations associated with solvent extraction. Some of them have been circumvented, have been, you know, unko, unpe thoda sa, um, you, you, there is a control on those, but emulsion formation, I mean, this is inherent. So there will be some sort of emulsion formation, which, which for which you need to give some time for the phase to separate. So that was all about, you know, solvent extraction, what it can do for organic molecules, for inorganic ions and some limitations and other things, other aspects. I'll just move on to this thing. This is uh, why I have this, this, this portion is included in uh, your syllabus is not to, uh, I mean, this is in practice as of now. There is no more practice of this counter current extraction, but it is always good to know what people used to do when solvent extraction could not do everything for them. It is of those times. It is almost now 65 to 70 years back when there was no chromatography. So when there was no chromatography, counter current extraction was 
was you know uh, the technique of choice when something you cannot do with solvent extraction so it acted as a bridge uh, till the time uh, chromatography was established uh, you had solvent extraction on one side and chromatography on the other side and in between you can say this was counter current extraction now whatever was achieved through counter current extraction can be done easily with chromatography technique so it is no more in practice but you just one one should appreciate what what led to the to this and what were the achievements of this counter current extraction the principle of counter current extraction is the same as exactly the same as solvent extraction but this is multiple liquid extraction liquid liquid extraction wo ek bar tha ye multiple times hai that is the only that is the only dif difference but more importantly the the apparatus what was not separatory funnel the apparatus what was not separatory funnel this is the beauty of this and still it did liquid liquid extraction but multiple in sequence in parallel simultaneous that is what is counter current there is no electric current here mind you in liquid liquid extraction it is counter current extraction multiple extractions a method of multiple liquid liquid extractions is counter current extraction which permits the separation of substances with different different uh, distribution coefficients but at the same time it also helped it also helped in separating mixtures which were ha which had <clears throat> similar or close distribution coefficients with simple liquid liquid extraction it is difficult it is very difficult it is very difficult to separate two compounds which are having very similar uh, partition coefficients under whatever conditions they they extract they are extracted together but with liquid liquid extraction 65 years back it was possible to separate them of course it was a very time consuming process which involved lot of solvent as well but it it you know met with success considerable success at that point of time for such difficult separations to ek ye cheez thi isiliye is cheez ko yahan pe introduce kiya gaya hai aur iska jo original equipment ye tha जो आज भी एक प्रोटोटाइप की तरीके से रखा हुआ है रॉकफेलर इंस्टीट्यूट में दिस इज अंड ड्रिवन मशीन जैसे आप देख सकते हैं यू कैन मूव इट राउंड एंड राउंड एंड राउंड हियर एंड दीज आर द ट्यूब्स द एक्सट्रैक्शन ट्यूब्स दे आर नॉट सेपरेटरी फनल्स बट दे आर ऑफ डिफरेंट शेप सो यू हैव इन सीरीज यू कैन सी अराउंड ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फाइव आई डोट नोट ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फाइव Uh, tubes arranged <coughs> here in series and every in each of this there is extraction happening but it they are interconnected they are interconnected so if something happens here then it goes to this then it goes to the say, third one fourth one fifth one and now in this way there are, there were 1000 tubes which used to you know do extraction simultaneously in series one after another so that was the beauty of this experiment that uh, this extraction counter current extraction and similarly these are the original figures of what were what was done that point of time it is still there as a prototype kept uh, these are two rows you know with this one with one you can have two rows so you can do two different extractions here similarly uh, very similar to the previous one now we have something to you know see here this is an this is an animation from which now you can see this apparatus this is a very different kind of a glass apparatus and what you find here is that blue one is the liquid from which you want to extract it was an aqueous phase the limitation of cragg's distribution uh, counter current extraction is that the extraction solvent should always be lighter than the aqueous phase but that is the limitation which was not there in solvent extraction now you can see 
if you can see it very clear uh, you know minutely this is how this is this is how we start you you tube you uh, pink is the extraction solvent you shake back and forth back and forth <clears throat> and then you tilt 90 degrees this will go and it will come out and once it comes out it goes to the second tube and then the third tube and then the fourth tube so on and so forth so this is what used to uh, be done in counter current it is very different from separatory funnel the limitation is that it uses it uses uh, 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 a limitation is that you cannot use a denser solvent than uh, the water the aqueous sample from which you want to extract this is one such problem associated with this uh, but it used to extract you know very tough separations at that point of time if they were two with different partition coefficients fine it was it was it was okay if that could be done with liquid liquid extraction as well but if they had similar you know partition coefficient then in that case in that case um, uh, this uh, this apparatus was was of use at that point of time so craig apparatus consists of series of glass tubes that are designed and arranged such that the lighter phase is uh, transferred from one tube to another that means this is the lighter phase pink is the li lighter phase it used to be transferred into the second tube and in the second tube jab jata tha tab usme already aqueous phase hota tha without the analyte blank so that it also starts to shake when it is shaking it should have the other phase so all were having the aqueous phase blank and jo first tube hoti thi jo first tube hoti thi isme se jab ye pink wala chala jata tha tab isme fresh pink dal diya jata tha solvent extraction solvent dal diya jata and this way this used to go on and on and on in the series of tubes which were arranged <coughs> uh, <coughs> in that equipment the liquid extractions were taking place simultaneously in all the tubes of the apparatus which is usually driven electromechanically and this is the figure and you have seen it number of times now that how it used to work the as i said the lower phase of the two phase solvent system is the heavier the upper is the lighter that is the organic aur jo pehli tube hoti thi usko wo kehte the tube 0 tube number 0 and second tube ko tube number 1 that is how the naming was done and then when it is transferred from uh, the zeroth tube to first tube number tube then it was known as first transfer and that was and that is uh, the the numbers and the transfers which used to happen from one to another apparatus to one uh, this thing uh, glass apparatus to another you know this thing uh, was known as and the transfers and the tubes were known as were, were like numbered as 0 1 2 3 4 not 1 2 3 4 but 0 1 2 3 4 okay now this is what uh, what i just mentioned the upper phase of the zeroth tube is then transferred to the tube 1 and the fresh solvent is added to tube 0 and the phases were equilibrated again the upper layers of tube 0 and one were simultaneously transferred to tube 1 and tube 2 now this becomes simultaneous every time you have aqueous phase without analyte in subsequent tubes in the first tube you have the sample and subsequently you keep on adding fresh solvents in tube number 0 and then doing the transfer one after another so over a period of time you would find you know you know this solution moving from zeroth tube to say hundredth tube and this whole process of extraction led to separation which was otherwise not possible with um, uh, uh, with um, uh, liquid liquid extraction simple liquid liquid extraction okay now this was um, uh, this thing uh, if we can just understand this i have just one minute that is why i am little hesitant to go beyond this uh, but uh, what i just want to convey through this slide is that it is a counter current extraction it is an extraction so it will have a distribution ratio and distribution ratio 
will be defined as the concentration of analyte A in the organic upon concentration of analyte A in water, in aqueous medium. This is organic, this is water. And we are concerned with fractions. So uh, once for one such extraction, P would be the amount extracted in the organic phase and Q would remain in the aqueous phase. Very similar. And this is this represents weight by volume, weight by volume. That is fine. This is fine. So you have P by Q. And since P plus Q is equal to 1 because total fraction, sum of total fractions is 1. So P plus Q is 1. So if we can substitute, if we can substitute P with D upon D plus 1 and Q with 1 by D plus 1, that means Q is something which remains, right, which is slightly less. And P is something which is slightly more. This is what we anticipate in an extraction. So therefore, they write D upon D plus 1 and 1 divided by D plus 1. Because when you add P plus Q, it will be 1. If you add D upon D plus 1 plus 1 upon D plus 1, D plus 1, D, D plus 1 common. So you have D plus 1 upon D plus 1, that is 1. So this equation is satisfied. So when you, when you do this, and finally, what you do, you arrive at this kind of an equation. This kind of an equation where fraction F, fraction F is equal to N factorial means the number of transfers. These are transfers. One transfer, second transfer, third transfer. First transfer, second transfer and third transfer. And these are the tubes. Zeroth tube, first one, uh, then the number one, number two and number three. And from this fraction, uh, we can always find for whichever tube we want, what would be the fraction of that substance would have which, which would have been extracted in that organic phase. So I'll just stop here and I'll pick up from this place only because I, I was a little fast in explaining this. Uh, but I hope just before this, I hope you understood what is the significance of uh, uh, this uh, uh, Craig's countercurrent extraction. Hello. Yes, sir. yes, sir. Great. So any any anything which you wish to ask or uh, you will be asking me on uh, Wednesday 10 a.m. I suppose you will be because uh, I don't know how much you understood. I was a little fast in the end, but still. Is it OK? No questions. Anyone? Any, any, anyway, so uh, uh, should I stop now? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. I was waiting for yes. OK, so thank you, everyone. Thank you for your presence. Take care. Stay safe. And we'll meet at uh, 10 a.m. Uh, on Wednesday. 10 a.m. on Wednesday. Till then, take care. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Thank you.